Okay, the last two inductance circuits to take a look at involve an alternate means of producing an alternating current. Of course, we produce an alternating current at a power plant by using a generator. We've covered that, of course, earlier here in the context of Faraday's law. But within individual circuit elements, you could also generate an alternating current by taking a charged up capacitor and placing it in series with an inductor. So we're going to take a look at what is called the LC circuit first, and then later on we'll include resistance in the circuit as well. We'll take a look at what is called the LRC circuit. Okay, as I set up the LC circuit, hopefully it's going to begin to look familiar to you. So the situation is as follows. All right, so right here is a capacitor, like so. The capacitor has capacitance C. It's already charged up. So we have here a capital Q naught and a negative Q naught for the initial charge on the capacitor. And then what we do is we ignore resistance for now, and we place it here in series with a solenoid like so. The solenoid here has inductance L. Okay, you discharge the capacitor, current begins to flow, counter EMF builds up. So now we're gonna use loop rule. We're gonna start here and go clockwise on the diagram like so. So I first of all have the voltage across the capacitor here, which is Q over C, if you remember, from chapter 24, like so. Okay, and then we're going against a battery here, if you will, that's the counter EMF. So then therefore, minus epsilon. Okay, replace the epsilon here with L times di dt. Okay, now the current is a function of time. If you recall, current is basically change in charge with respect to time. That change in charge with respect to time is specifically referring to the decreasing charge on the capacitor as a function of time. So now what I'm gonna do is replace I with negative dq dt. The reason why it's negative, and this is easy to miss, the reason why it's negative is because the charge on the capacitor is decreasing as a function of time. Therefore, I then take this expression and write it like this. Like so. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is take this expression and I'm basically gonna solve it for the second derivative here of charge with respect to time, which I'm ultimately gonna put on the other side of the diagram, or the other side of the expression, rather. All right, so let me go ahead and start moving some terms around. Let me actually take this guy here and move it to the other side first. Let's do that. Like so. Okay, and then divide by L. I'll write the expression like this. Okay, so does this differential equation look familiar? Stuff times position equals second derivative. It's a simple harmonic oscillator. Okay, so recall the SHO differential equation, which if we go back to uh, chapter 14, I believe it was, we have the following as our differential equation that describes the position of an oscillator as a function of time. Okay, recall, of course, that the position is a function of time. It is a cosine omega t, where omega, the angular frequency, was the square root of k over m. Notice this expression here. It's a simple harmonic oscillator. In this case, however, the solution to the oscillation's equation is the charge of the capacitor as a function of time. The charge on the capacitor as a function of time is equal to its initial value, Q naught, multiplied by cosine omega t. Okay, what is the omega? That's the angular frequency. And what's the square root of the constants in front of the charge Q? The omega here is the square root of 1 over LC. Ultimately, the units here are in terms of radians per second without going through all the dimensional analysis. Okay, now let's find the current as a function of time by taking the negative derivative. Okay, so the current as a function of time is negative dq dt. So differentiate cosine and you end up with a negative sign. That negative sign will cancel with this, however. Use chain rule and bring an omega out in front, and then therefore you end up with this. Like so. 
Okay, now jumping back to chapter 14 for just a moment with the SHO, also recall the energy E. The energy E was a constant, it was equal to one half K squared. Okay, what's the equivalent expression here for the LC circuit? Well, the total energy E is gonna be a combination of two things. It's gonna be a combination of the potential energy that's still stored within the capacitor plus the magnetic potential energy that is now being stored within the solenoid as you have a magnetic field appear. Now recall that the potential energy associated with a capacitor is one half Q squared over C. And then recall that the magnetic potential energy associated with a solenoid is one half Li squared. Okay, watch what happens as I take this expression here for the charge as a function of time and plug it into here. And I take this expression here for the current as a function of time and I plug it into here. Okay, let me do some erasing here. Okay, so first of all, I have one half Q squared over C. So one over two C, let me write it like that. And then we have Q squared. So Q naught squared cosine squared omega T. Okay, and then plus one half L times I squared. So this guy squared. Omega squared Q naught squared sine squared omega T. Do you notice the beginnings of a trig identity? Cosine squared plus sine squared, which is one. Well, I can't quite use that trig identity yet, but right here, let's go ahead and substitute in for omega, this guy right here. And let's then see what happens when I do. All right, so I've got here a one over two C, Q naught squared, cosine squared omega T. Okay, and then plus one half L times omega squared. So one over LC, and then Q naught squared sine squared omega t. Okay, so let's go ahead and cancel out an L here and here. And now notice that the coefficients, one half Q naught squared over C are common to both the cosine squared and sine squared term. So then therefore, you end up with this as the total energy of the LC circuit. Notice that it's equal to the total energy initially of the charged up capacitor. This is analogous to like the simple harmonic oscillator being at the amplitude position where all of the energy is potential energy, and then therefore all the energy is one half Ka squared. Okay, now that's essentially the gist of it for an LC circuit. It's basically a simple harmonic oscillator, and then therefore we produce an alternating current. Okay, what do you suppose is gonna to happen to this alternating current, this simple harmonic oscillator, if we stick in a resistor such that energy is lost as heat? Well, as you might guess, it's of course gonna be a damped harmonic oscillator. So let's go back to chapter 14 for just a moment to look at the basics of the DHO. Okay, so now the DHO, it had the following differential equation. So here's basically the spring force divided by the mass. Right here is the damping force divided by the mass. Here's the acceleration itself. Okay, and then recall that the solution to this differential equation, I know it's been a while since you've seen it, is the following. Where the angular frequency omega was this quantity here. Okay, and then the energy as a function of time, if you recall, was also an exponential decay as well. Okay, right here is the amplitude as a function of time as an exponential decay. Oh, this is time t, like so. So there's the exponential decay of the amplitude as a function of time. Okay, and then the energy as a function of time, once again, I know it's been a while since we've seen it, was also this exponential decay with a slightly different exponent. Notice the lack of the two there, okay? All right, so essentially by analogy, I'm just gonna set up the differential equation for what is called the LRC circuit, show that it is in fact a damped harmonic oscillator, and then we'll just make a comparison. We'll compare what we already know for the DHO and come up with the equivalent expressions now for the LRC circuit. Okay. All right, so let me do some erasing here.
All right, so I'm going to draw the same diagram here, of course, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stick in a resistor. Okay, once again, the current, however, is going to be a negative number because the charge on the capacitor decreases as a function of time. So once again, we need that negative sign. Okay, so here is my initially charged up capacitor like so. With capacitance C, we have our initial Q naught, like so. Okay, here's the resistor, here's the inductor. Okay, current flows, here's the resistance like so. Right here is the counter EMF. Okay, so just use loop rule once again, going all the way around here clockwise. So Q over C minus IR minus epsilon is equal to zero. Okay, now go ahead and replace the epsilon once again, like so. Okay, and now this I right here is going to be negative dQ dt. Like so. This di dt right here is going to be the negative derivative of this guy. Like so. So you end up with this expression. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move terms around so that they basically make it look like this. All right, so basically I'm going to divide by L and move all this junk to the other side. Okay, I'll put the second derivative over here so we can make our nice easy comparison. Like so, and we end up with this expression here. So now compare this what we have here. Okay, so first of all, what is the equivalent expression for the LRC circuit of this, the position as a function of time? Well, it's the charge as a function of time. So we have our initial value of Q naught, and then we have e to the exponent. So notice that the exponent is the same thing as this right here in front of the first derivative expression, but just with an extra two. So then therefore, by mathematical analogy, has to look like this, and then cosine omega t. Okay, let's get the omega. So first of all, we have, remember, k over m, that's from this here. So then we have 1 over lc, like we did for the, uh, for the lc circuit from earlier. The SHO version of this, if you will. Okay, and then minus the parentheses here, square, which is the same thing as the exponent. So, and then lastly is the expression for the total energy. Okay, now remember for the LC circuit from earlier, and by the way, you should probably label this in your notes, or the LRC circuit. Okay, from the LC circuit from earlier, recall that the total energy was this expression here. Okay, so what is the equivalent? Well, we've got this exponent here, where in the exponent we had a B over M. In this case, it's the R over L. Like so. And that completes then inductance circuits. There is one more topic prior to the AP exam. I will cover that in Wednesday's folder. On Friday, that's when the next exam will be administered, is the open note exam on magnetism. That's the last step prior to the AP exam itself, but we literally have one topic left. Today's shirt, by the way, was skinless.